of Mark, chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. Days before, Jesus and his friends entered the city of Jerusalem to celebrate Passover week. During the day, Jesus taught the crowds. Teacher, what is the most important of all the commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind and with all your strength. And here's the second one. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The people were delighted with what Jesus had to say. Everyone but the religious leaders. He just drove the money changers out of the temple. And all of that talk of the temple being destroyed. It's time to arrest him. But secretly, or the people may stir up trouble about it. It must have been a relief to Jesus to spend the evenings in the town of Bethany, outside of Jerusalem. Now, two nights before Passover, Jesus ate dinner at the home of a man named Simon. Welcome, welcome. Simon had once had a terrible skin disease, but was now well. It's possible that Jesus had healed him. Come, have a seat at the table. Conversation had died down as Jesus and his closest friends took their seats. Now, even the people who hadn't been with Jesus in Jerusalem had heard of all the attention that he was drawing. And not all of it good. Jesus, are you sure you want to go back to the city tomorrow? There's a lot of talk, plans. The religious leaders want to take you out. Now, Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, frowned. He was already making plans of his own to talk to the Pharisees. Jesus has never been careful. As Jesus and the other guests ate and drank, a woman entered the room, Mary. Now, not long before, Mary listened at the feet of Jesus as he taught. And the previous week, Jesus brought her brother Lazarus back to life. Hey, could you bring me some more of that quail? Woman would only come to the table to serve food, but Mary wasn't here to do that. Instead, she carried a beautiful jar with a sealed lid and walked directly towards Jesus. Hello, quail, over here. Mary kept her gaze on Jesus, and carefully, she cracked the jar against the table, breaking off the lid. Immediately, a sweet, earthy fragrance filled the room. Wait, is that perfume? Mary took the jar and spilled the entire content over Jesus' head. Everyone gasped. Everyone but Jesus. The people in the room began to whisper. What is she doing? Seems like such a waste. Judas didn't even bother to keep his voice down. You know how much that perfume was worth? An entire year's pay. It was true. The jar of perfume called Nard was most likely Mary's entire life savings. It was what she had to keep her safe just in case something went wrong. But instead of hiding it away, she gave it freely to Jesus, and Judas could see no sense in that. Just think about it. She could have sold that perfume and given the money to poor people who legit need it. Yeah, that, that is a good point. While Judas sounded generous, truth is, he was in charge of the money that Jesus and the disciples had, and he liked to use that money for himself. Jesus, you really ought to tell her how she's messed up. Jesus looked at Mary, then turned to the others. Leave her alone. What? Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. You will always have poor people with you. You can help them anytime you want to, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body to prepare me to be buried. What she has done will be told anywhere the good news is preached all over the world. Jesus' words silenced Judas and everyone else in the room. While everyone else was looking out for themselves, Mary had given what she valued most to show her love for Jesus.
like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that. So I just want to lift my hands 